Now, again, do you care if you've created a Google Doc about printers and then all of a sudden you get start getting advertisement for printers? I don't know. Maybe you know. Maybe you don't care. A little invasive. Yeah. Yeah. A little. Little. Is there a Googler sitting in Google head office? You know, trawling through people's spreadsheets. Oh, I wonder if there's anything interesting in here. No, they don't care. There is the ability for a support representative to go and access your documents if they mm -hmm. really wanted to, but technically they're supposed to have your consent. So I would okay. never expect that to happen ever unless you've expressly given permission for somebody to access your account. This is a good place to, to switch because one of the, the central things that I wanted to know about was, uh, why do I need a business account? Yeah, I have all of this stuff that has come with my, my new computer. Yep. And and I do understand uh, if you're not paying for it, then you are the product. So they're going to look at my personal information and that's fair game for marketing. So it seems like one reason for paying the extra and getting the business account would be increased privacy. Could you walk me through the basics or I, I need to know the basics of what I'm getting for free. And then what I what am I getting in addition by paying for that upgrade to the business account. Sure. There's a couple of simple things that you get paying for a business workspace account over just using a consumer Gmail account. So number one, you get to use your own domain name. That's, okay. the, that's, the, most, that's the most basic one. And you get this admin panel, admin.google.com becomes your, your new place to go when you wanna manage your business. Now, it's just you, right? But what you will have is a list of users for any of the users that you that you wanna create. And what you will end up doing is obviously just have yourself here, but if one day you hire contractors, anyone to support your business growth, maybe employees come on board for your consulting at some point, you're gonna end up with additional email addresses that you start to deploy. And the most important thing about this is if someone is under your domain name, you have control of their data. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? Well, that means that if they need to leave the business, if they need to no longer be an employee, effectively, you can reset their password, delete their account, kick off their account, whatever you need to do there, right? So you've got full control of that. And mm -hmm. that means when you start sharing data between multiple accounts, usually if you share data between accounts, what you create, you own, and what I create, I own. The only right. problem with that is if you own it, you can delete it. So if you create stuff for me, then you can delete it. If you're, a, if you're my contractor or if I'm your contractor, we can delete each other's data potentially, and we don't want that. So having this business account gives us then a business Google Drive and inside the business Google Drive, we say, right, okay, for each area of the business, we create one of these, it's called a shared drive. It's like a corporate drive. And you've probably got that at the university that you're at, an S drive or an I drive or, or whatever. Uh, and you say, right, in this drive, these are the only people that are allowed to access this drive and they have different levels of permissions. Uh, we've got a million videos on the channel on, on setting that up. But importantly, the company has control. So that's Good the deal. first thing that you get. Questions about that? And then, I'll, and then I'll go through a couple of other benefits as well. Everybody has their own account. Yep. And then I don't have to get everybody a, a Chromebook. They could use their Whatever Mac device they want. Yeah. Log in. And then what if I am collaborating with someone else? Can I take my account and attach it to them? So, so basically, I have people that pay me to do their math homework for them, to do statistics and research. The, if I want to collaborate with them, can I connect to their account temporarily to, to yeah, do so that? That's, so that's a great question. That would depend more on how they're set up, right? Because they yeah. ideally they want to be savvy enough to be set up with shared drives. If they're on a business account, hopefully they're savvy enough and they've set up a shared drive. You can create mm -hmm. things and put it in the shared drive for them. What that looks like is you'll see here I'm connected to a number of shared drives that I don't own. So these, see, this says, uh, these are owned by BizTech Lawyers. These are owned by Moriarty.co. These are owned by Onsite Helper. These are owned by Playstack. So these different shared drives are owned by other people. If I put something in there, they become the owner or the company becomes the owner. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. And where do the, the docs actually exist? Are, are, are there, they're not on your computer, they're on a drive 
somewhere mm-hmm. in the world. Google Drive so in the cloud. cloud. Yeah. And okay. and you can yeah. synchronize to your computer, whether you're on a Chromebook or a Mac using the Google mm-hmm. Drive app, no different to the Dropbox app does the mm-hmm. same thing. So you can synchronize, download files, they'll appear in your finder or if you're on a Chromebook in the file manager and effectively you're able to see all of those files in there. Okay, this is good. What if uh, I'm doing some traveling and I'm going to be basically offline, I'm going to be in airports and then away for a while. Is is the Chromebook, uh, does it just become a brick if it's not connected to the internet or can I still do business stuff uh, and then have it all sync up when I am back to my own Wi-Fi. You can do a lot offline with a Chromebook. So if you've got your Google Drive set up to synchronize with your uh, Mac Finder, as an example here, or if you're on a Windows machine or Chromebook, same, same. Uh, you can open up information either from your shared drives or even from your My Drive. And it's just a matter of going to a folder right-clicking and going to make available offline. And that's gonna synchronize that folder from the cloud down to your local machine. Okay. Oh yeah, oh, that's cool. if, it's oh. very cool, yeah. So that's that's gonna start happening automatically in the background for me here. I'm not sure why that one's not opening. Uh, running a little bit slow there. And so uh, I'm yeah. getting up a, a folder, everything in that folder would sync, or you could go to the level that you want to get individual files if you wanted those. Correct. So it's now downloading all those files. All those little green ticks are the ones that are now available offline. So usually what will happen is if you've got, let's say I've got a PDF here, right? And see, it might be a bit hard to see, but there's a little cloud icon next to it. I, I do see that. Yeah. So if I was to double click and try and open that, It is going to open, but it'll take a moment to open up on my screen because it's got to download it live in the background. Now it's going to be cached offline for however long it thinks is appropriate based on how much disk space I've got available and blah, blah, blah. Um, (laughs) And so it effectively just will hold that as long as it needs to. And then it'll remove the local copy again and leave it, just leave it on the cloud. But that moment that you hit make available offline, which I already did, all of these other ones a one by one going to be downloaded. And you can see, yeah, one by one, it's got a copy of all of them. And the Google documents, they even work offline as well through Google Chrome. So as long as you're running Google Chrome, you can set up offline mode inside your Google documents. So let me share how to do that because whether you're on a Mac or a Chrome device, the setting is the same. We go into our Google Drive, we go to our settings and then we switch on offline mode. Ah, oh, looks like I haven't switched. This is a new computer. I haven't okay. switched it on here. There we go. So okay. that's when I start synchronizing my documents offline. So I've got access to each one of my documents. Now you asked an important question earlier that I didn't cover. And that was, what if you have someone working for you, right? What if you've got a contractor or someone you're uh, collaborating with? Uh, maybe they've got a Gmail account or maybe they have their own Google Workspace account. If you are the owner of a set of files or you're the owner of you know, a body of work, the best way to protect that is to set up a shared drive. So you configure a shared drive. You say, right, I'll call it test here. My important work. Let's go find that one. There we go. You call it a test. Oh, uh, yeah, I should have. Exactly. Um, and then you will, you'll add the email address to the person. Now I'll add my, you know, my personal email now as an example, I choose what level of permission I want to give a popular one for contractors is the contributor permission, uh, meaning they can add and they can edit files. They can maybe even share files, but importantly, they can't delete anything. Gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. Add and edit, but not delete. And then you've now given somebody else access to that. So that's how you would configure for a shared uh, contractor. That's excellent. So this raises another point. Yeah. Uh, when I get the free version of Google, it comes with some amount of storage in my my drive. Keeping with our theme of what why upgrade to business, do I get more storage if I pay for business? Yeah, so you get, um, depending on the plan, I think it's one terabyte or two terabytes per person. Yeah, there we go. So on the, um, oh, the start is only 30 gig. That's very low still. Uh, business standard is my is my minimum recommendation for anyone uh, because 
you get a bunch of additional features uh, like automatic recording of meetings. Um, there's more sophisticated sharing settings inside uh, the Google uh, shared drives. And uh, I mean, the storage is pretty compelling as well. You're a creator, so um, you definitely want to go for the two terabytes. I don't think 30 gig would last you very long at all. Um, so business standard is the starter and then that's your per user price that you pay for and you get the storage, but you also get all the other business features as well. Probably a good time to mention some of the other like most obvious features that really make sense for yeah. moving like from a Gmail account to a workspace account. Number one is access to support. So mm -hmm. if you have a consumer Gmail account, Google really don't care about you. And I've seen people run businesses on the consumer accounts, something goes wrong. Maybe they get hacked. I don't know, maybe just Google flags their account for spamming or whatever, just random things happen. And then they get locked out of their account and all their business data, all their business history is stuck there. And that's that's a big problem. It's a material risk for a business to lose access to data like that. Google have 2 billion, 2 billion mailboxes or nearly 2 billion mailboxes to manage. Mm -hmm. They just can't manage it with human resources. It's automated systems only. There's no one to call, no one to talk to with a business workspace account. Now, they're not gonna roll out the red carpet for you, but you have multiple ways of getting back into that account. Because you own the domain name, fundamentally, mm -hmm. only one domain name can ever have one Google workspace account attached to it at any one time. So, you prove mm -hmm. to Google you own the domain name, guess what, you get back into your account, no matter what. And you may have to work with us being a partner to, to you know find your way into support. If you've also let your domain name lapse, that makes it a little bit harder. Uh, you know, there, there's some challenges getting back into accounts, but in most cases, eight, nine out of 10 cases, you can get back into an account because you own the domain name. So that's pretty straightforward. So that that ticket alone, to me, gives me the safety that uh, and the comfort that, okay, my business data is safe, even if I do something silly, like forget the password to get into my account. Whereas with a Gmail account, you're up shit creek, as we say in Australia. Uh, so go too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Oh, I didn't know that. Great. Um, so, so that, so that's that's the, that's the recommendation there. You get other things like a SLA, service level agreement, guaranteed, you know, guaranteed uptime, and, and all those kind of things. But um, the 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 best thing about it is um, they're not going to use your data for advertising. There's privacy statements that say that they they don't have any claim or ownership of your intellectual property that you upload to their cloud system, even though they're holding it in their cloud system. That was a big mm -hmm. thing five ten years ago. Who owns the data? Uh, right. But then the yep. other one is you know, on a practical level, is this data safe and recoverable if something goes wrong with my account? Because if every one of your email, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like if every one of your emails for a decade is in there, is if every file you've created over the last decade, every bit of content you've created over the last decade is in one place, you better not lose it. <laughs> because, and most people don't back it up either. Backup is a good idea, but most people don't back it up. So you want to you hope that no one loses it. Okay. One thing you said stuck out to me. You're talking about the per user. Yeah. So if it's just me, can I get this for just me? Or do, is there a you minimum number of users? One okay. user is fine. There is technically even a, a more affordable uh, plan, which is called the Google Workspace Individual Plan. But uh, I, mm -hmm. I don't. it's not on the website. I don't even know if it's available in all regions. Uh, but my strong recommendation is buy one license of the business standard plan, that, that middle, the middle tier business plan. Uh, but yeah, okay. you can certainly buy it just for one, one user in... You used to get a discount if you pay annually. I don't know if that's still there anymore. Uh, but uh, yeah, but you also get Gemini on that account, the advanced version, because you're paying for a Google account, which is nice. You get the two terabytes of storage. Um, you can't use it for things like Google Play, movies and that kind of thing. If you want to share stuff with your family, uh, it does work for Google Photos, but um, not in the same way a consumer account works. There's some limitations. There's some limitation using Google Home devices and stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't work all that all that great. Uh, but for if you're at all serious about your business, even if you're a sole operator, absolutely, absolutely a must. But, but I can buy a business plan with just me as a sole proprietor. Correct. And I do think the the other limitations you were discussing sound more like a feature than a bug, which the distractions that we started with the minimizing of distractions through not having something that's you know i don't need to be watching movies oh, I, I already have access to youtube that's enough of a, of a distraction correct, correct. Well, well, i'll the focus reason, on 
the reason I do mention that is um, some some business owners will just want to have everything in one account, and I understand that because you know managing our digital lives gets difficult. But, you know, just managing one inbox, um, let alone let alone multiple. Um, yet, if you're building a brand and a business, you probably want to have some kind of separation. You know, with your personal data, you don't want to be like you know. Uh, lo- you know, loading up a presentation, and you know, all of a sudden, your photos from from wherever are up there on the screen, right? So, so having having uh, separate accounts is is a good idea. Um, mm-hmm. But what some people will do is they'll have one account for their business, and you know, maybe they've got an accounting firm, they've got ten staff, and they've got everything in a Google Workspace account. But then they they want like a Google account for home, and they might use a business account for home, which I do. I use a business account for home, and right. what that gives me is large amounts of storage, better recoverability for the data because I have a lot of like personal YouTube video content that I've created, which is outside my main business uh, that right. goes in there as well. Um, and so I, I choose to use that account um, for my primary home account, right? Mm-hmm. The challenge is it, it misses out on some of those consumer features. So I then have a third account, which is a real Gmail account for those one or two things that I need to do, you know, which overcomplicates things, but for an IT person, who wants to have that that separation? You know, some people want to do two workspace accounts, and not just an IT person, an IT genius. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I try to be. I try to be. <laughs> Tune into part three as the conversation with guest Todd continues.